Ladies and gentlemen, join me for my first day on the new Titan Company server. We've gone ahead and set up our own server through G Portal, and I want to begin my adventure by building a brigantine. This will be a Let's Build style video, and in order to build this ship, we are going to need the large shipyard. So as the video begins, I will already have that built. I add a loom to one end and a smithy to the other, as those are both essential in the building process. And I also recommend that you go ahead and unlock the third tier of improved hand gathering. My first thought was that only applies to you actually using your hands, but it applies to the hatchet, the pick, and the sickle. So as you set out to gather the wood, metal, thatch, and fiber necessary to build a ship of this size, you are going to want to have the additional 60% gather rate. And the ship we build today, guys, even though we use the brigantine hull, is going to be closer to a bark from history. The bark typically had three masts, the first two square rigged, and the last one rigged with a triangular sail. So in order to build this ship, we'll be using two large speed sails as the foremast and the mainmast. And on the mizzenmast, we're going to be using a medium weight sail. Go ahead and click the like button if you find yourself enjoying and join me as we dive straight into the building process. All right, guys, the goal of today's video, as I would have mentioned off the top, is to show you the process of building a brigantine here in survival. One of the things I've noticed is my positioning of this large shipyard might not be ideal. A galleon certainly won't get out of here, and a brigantine might not even get out of here. It'll be the first one in our harbor. You see a couple of sloops and uh, with different sail designs and stuff like that, and a schooner currently in production. But I think what's going to happen is I'm going to build this brig, and then we're going to wreck this shipyard and put it somewhere else in order for me to properly get out of the harbor. But step one uh, involves loading all your resources directly into this uh, ship, uh, shipyard, the dry docks. And once you do that, you can click here. Boom. And that is under construction now. If I Do I have to scroll down to see it? I don't know. Or did it just happen? It just happened. Okay, perfect. And now that that's in place, it actually makes uh, this shipyard traversable going both directions. There is no bridge on this side. So once you have put the actual ship skeleton in place, you can travel back and forth between both locations. You'll be able to access the shipyard inventory here, and then you'll be able to access the loom and everything else here. So if I go into the shipyard, grab what I need, load it into the loom, we can build sails. And if I do the same thing over here on this side where I've placed the smithy, I can access the shipyard, grab what's needed, metal, fiber, wood, thatch, hide, and I can load it straight into the smithy in order to build structures like ship add-ons. This is the dinghy uh, hoist. And ship construction will have the wheel as well as all the medium bits, planks, and uh, ship deck bits. I am going to be a geek generally playing Atlas for building ships that are somewhat historically accurate. All right, now that the skeleton is in place, guys, my plan is to go ahead and do all the basics to build up the decking that is required. And I'm going to have, I think, one large deck up top and a small deck on the bottom. And I will uh, leave space. I think you can do a total of three decks. I'm going to do two. So a top deck and a bottom deck. I won't have one in the middle. And my idea is that this ship should be able to carry animals for me, Noah's Ark style. And I'm going to get to construction on a brig. The fun part for us, guys, is going to be adding in the sails. I'm going to be a geek when I play Atlas, building historically accurate looking ships. A brigantine and a brig uh, both historically are two masted vessels. Now, no one is going to build a brig with two masts. If you go all large sails, you can do three of them. If you do all medium sails, you can do five of them. And five masted vessels, fairly rare in history. I think what we're going to end up doing is a four masted vessel. And you have two options. You can do one large and three small, which would be a, sorry, one large and three medium, which would be quite an unusual look. Or you can do two large, one medium, one small. I think that is the layout I'm going to go with. But let me go ahead and prep all of the planks and all of the decking that is necessary to build this thing out. Uh, let me go ahead and get the basics of shipbuilding done. I will bring you back once I'm ready to slap the pieces on and then we'll get to work with the fun part of deciding on a sail combination and how to orient those on the deck of this ship. All right, we are about ready to get on to the building. I have gone ahead and prepped a bunch of stuff. You can see a bunch more on my hotbar. I'm a little bit encumbered right now, but we are going to wander up and start with the decks of the ship, placing them. Now, I believe the one uh, at the very bottom of the boat is going to just fit perfectly in the base of the boat, and I think the one on top is going to leave a gap. Now, what I did, I went ahead and made the, the ceilings that would be needed to close that gap, but I'm not sure that we're going to. It might be nice to have a ramp or an open uh, sort of 
hold, since this ship won't be used for combat, having a hole in the middle of the center of it wouldn't be too big a deal. But let's go ahead and turn the HUD back on, and let's see here. Okay, so that is the top deck, and uh, there are uh, multiple snap points. So you can go down, and you go, there you go. So that's the one we want. Oh, that, did that go in? It did. Okay, and so here's the top deck. It leaves two holes, as does this one. And from what I read, it said you need 18 ceilings to fill the gap. So let's go ahead and put this one in on the top. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put back the planks and gun ports. We'll add those in in a moment. Let's go ahead and add in the ceilings. I can always remove them later. But if we go ahead and take these and say put back uh, these... And these will come back for these moments. So you need 40 of these to complete. 28 and 12 should do the trick. Um, but we can go ahead and see exactly how many ceilings are needed to fill these gaps. I think that's a 2x2 two two at the back and a 2 by whatever here in the middle. So let's go ahead and see how these fit. Uh, all right, so that is exactly it. So I don't think I want an opening uh, here. So we'll go ahead and close that off. And you can see they, they fit in beautifully. The, it's basically a reskin of the arc uh, wooden ceiling. But uh, honestly, it looks great. So I think I may leave some of this here. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll play around with it. At the back here, I'm going to go ahead and close it off for now. But in the future, it's an easy uh, adjustment to make. Why do I keep doing that? Uh, so I could just go here if I wanted to and remove. At the moment, I can still pick up. But normally, you can demolish. Uh, and then we're, we'll head... Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's keep let's keep these wooden ceilings. We'll decide if we want to add them here in a moment. But let's run back down to our smithy and let's grab all the planking we need. I think I'll be able to carry it all with these ceilings here. So let's go ahead and put these in five and six. And we'll have to figure out, okay, I am a little bit encumbered, but uh, we should solve that pretty quickly. So with five, I have the medium wood plank. It has two snap, oh, I see, a couple of different snap points. As I get closer, there may be more. Yeah, yeah, okay, perfect. And then with the gun ports, those would have to be, I see. So because I haven't added in a deck here, these gun ports... Uh, aren't going to work well for me. I might have to go ahead and add that next deck in on the ship uh, in order to make this work because the gun ports can't seem to snap below. Maybe they can. Can I snap? Okay, so let's see. What if I did... This is a spot where a gun port normally goes. If I snap that in, do I have gun ports on the bottom? I don't. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove this, pick up a medium wooden plank. I may have to add in that deck if I want to eventually take advantage of these gun ports. Uh, they can only go in specific locations. So the six upper spots on the hull, you have to build a galleon before you get lower down. So that is half of them, and we can now run. We'll go ahead and put them on the other side. And I'll have to see about adding that in, whether we need uh, the the deck or whether I can do it with ceilings or something like that as we go forward. I don't know. We'll, we'll hop to the inside of the ship here in a moment and we'll explore. This is my first time really shipbuilding. So let's get up top. All right. And let's hop down here for the moment. Perfect. So can you, oh, I have to go get the ceilings. Let's go ahead and we'll build off here. We'll snap these in. Now, these are a one-piece does all, so uh, they will go in whatever place is required, and that means if you go all the way to the back of the boat, they will fill these large uh, stern segments, which are, are sort of the, the base of an aft castle if you were going to build an extended hull up above. Let's slap these all in and put away those fists. Thank you. And I think 40 is the perfect number. So let's go ahead and we'll put those in. And it looks like, just like Ark, I could snap and destroy the gun ports if I wasn't paying close attention. So we will do this and this. And I'm going to get myself on the outside of the ship here before it's too late and I'm locked inside. And we'll put one there and one there. Okay, now let's get up top and examine our hull. So that looks good. So we've got the we've got the full uh, complement of gun ports in. I wonder if I ought to make that other deck for us. Uh, I wonder if I can simply do it here. We'll have to grab some resources from here. But let's see if we can make one more deck. We can go ahead and make one more deck. And I think we will see. We'll grab this on the hotbar, and we'll also grab the ceilings. And then in just a moment, we'll go to work on the sails. Okay, I am quite encumbered. Let's put the rest of this stuff, including this insane amount of metal in here. We will come back to it. Okay, we can run. 
we can run. Beautiful. So I really like the Brig Hall, guys. I think it's one of the prettier ones, and I think you could, there's going to be a ton of versatility as to what you can build. A Brigantine is what it's going to be called. That's what everyone's going to call it. But if you put more than two masts on this, this isn't a Brigantine. That's just not how it works. So let's head down here. We can obviously place one at this height. Can we just simply place ceilings without the hull? We can't. Okay, so we're going to have to do... Oh, and I'm trapped down here now, aren't I? Yes, I am. <laughs> I am trapped down here. Okay, we're going to have to place that. And then let's see if I can make a ladder in my inventory. I probably can't. I didn't bring any resources. Okay, so I am I am trapped down here. Uh, I will have to figure out how to uh, get the hell out of this boat. Um, what an idiot. What a stupid idiot. All right, guys, so uh, I wanted to show you, if I remove the extra deck down here and I opt for no cannons, leave obviously the cannon ports, the gun ports there, this is what the hull looks like, and this is much more suited to transporting big beasts. Now, what I was going to do, uh, the reason that I demolished it was because I'm a moron and I trapped myself down here, and I figured I could just get use break it, use the materials to get myself out, and then build another one. What I was going to do is to build down with the uh, staircase. So there's a cool-looking angular staircase. This one would work okay, and I kind of like the idea, but it wouldn't work as well for beasts. So what I'm thinking, actually, is that back here near the back of the ship, I'm going to do something like this, where we add in a staircase. And I think I might add in a second one. Well, uh... Let, let's see. Do I have the mats to craft it? We do. I think I might add in a one that goes sort of tandem to it on the other side, but I'd have to figure out how that wouldn't be too bad, would it? If I do this and I were to, ideally, I don't know how many I can make right now. No more. But if I do the same thing on the other side, this wouldn't be the worst way to get up and down from the hull of the ship. But if, if we have this staircase going down like this, this could take you into a, a rear part of the hull, the hull where we could store uh, valuables, things like that. And then we could have an open cargo hull for our beasts of burden. I think this is going to be quite a nice design. Um, what I'll need to do uh, before we can really get too far is uh, build up that aft castle and the rear deck. But I'm wondering if we should just move on straight to the sails right now. And I'm going to head over with you. We're going to build up a couple of sails, and we're going to try and find an ideal position for the sails we want to build. But I did want to, for the first time, slap in ramps. Now, this is something that is uh, new to this game uh, that is uh, something that comes from Structures Plus in Arc. So we have... Different Now, we have to choose it before we build it, but we have different options. But I want to make it very easy to get creatures up and down. And what I'm going to do is build our uh, foresail here, and I'm going to build our main sail at the back of it. And then we'll, scram, we'll cram in the others uh, from that point. But I think, I, again, I think I'm going to ramp down from this side. I think that's my best bet. We'll figure it out. Okay, so let's find the snap point that we're looking for, and let's rotate through all the options. So, Okay, so this one is called wooden ramp. I think that is probably the one, and let's rotate snap points. There we go. We'll put one here, and they're steeper than, uh, than they need to be. Let's go here and here. Okay, okay. So another thing that comes from Structures Plus, it's temporary, and it's in arc now. But you have 30 seconds to pick regular building pieces back up, it would be nice if it was the same for sails, but alas, it is not. So we're going to change from roof to ramp and put that in. So we now have a ramp that can get things up and down into our cargo hold. Behind here, like I said, we'll build a, uh, a separated off uh, uh, private hold where we can keep some uh, more valuable storage. But this will be our way up and our way down. So let's head over to the weavers and let's look at the sails I have available. I might have already built a couple. But uh, after a couple attempts placing them the first time, I just demolished what I had and wanted to wanted to reset. So let's search here, sail. Okay, let's make two of the large sails. I know we will be needing those. We have more resources uh, if we need them hidden inside the dry dock, which is right here. Uh, everything but wood. I don't have a lot of wood. So these are the two main sails. Uh, the the foresail and the actual mainsail. These are the two primary ones. And these are the ones that I want to get in position before we have to do anything else. They weigh about 100 each. So you're going to want to make sure your weight is upped. And let's go ahead and move down, move ourselves up onto the deck of the ship. And I'm going to try placing one just four of the uh, ramp there, maybe a little bit further ahead. And we're going to definitely place one at the first snap point back of this. So that would be right here. 
All right, so that is one. Now, positionally, I think I can use my K camera. All right, so that would look good. That would look good. That would look okay. And I think that's about as far forward as you want to go. I don't want to go there. So let's try that. That would leave us enough room to get into the ramp. So would this, really. This this here is a little bit more balanced. Let's go ahead and put that in place for now. All right. Now we have room for a medium sail and a small sail. The medium sail is going to have to go behind this one, which shouldn't be a problem. So I think we're going to do a medium weight sail. That is the one that looks the most like uh, the sail at the back of a traditional bark, uh, which is B-A-R-K in American and B-A-R-Q-U if you use, uh, well, technically it's French, but if you use standard English, I think I have made that one already. So that's the medium weight sail. Now we're going to have to figure out which small sail will complement this. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to add a fourth sail. It will have to be small. But once we do, it will kind of get to customize the look of it a little bit. Um, what we miss on a ship like this is a standard ship like this would have a uh, main a bowsprit, a sort of a pole that extends straight off on a slight upward angle. And between this, there would be a bunch of triangular sails. They would be attached here uh, to the bowsprit. They would have an attachment here on the side of the boat, uh, depending on where the wind was coming from, and then a rope that runs all the way up, and they'd be triangular. You'd see two or three of them here. You'd see a couple of them, again, same thing in between these two sails. We don't have that, those little decorative additional sails. So we have to go with what we've got, which means if we want to give the appearance of a traditional sailing ship, using a small sail might allow us to do that. So I know that in order to make this look like a traditional bark, and we'll go with the K camera here, we're going to need to add a weight sail. Now, if I step forward myself and zoom out, that is about as close as you'd want to go. If I go, yeah, okay, so that is about as close as you'd want to go. So we're going to do this, and then what we're going to do is add a small sail about the same distance in front of the other one, and hopefully that will give us the look we are going for. So let's go ahead and slap this in. If we go quickly, we can uh, raise all of these sails and see what they look like up. So let's go fully open, and I'm working around this, this hull. Uh, which is part of the problem. I guess I could probably close it off. I could put two ceilings here and move this forward one if I was willing to demolish these once more. Uh, and let's go with the K camera and see how these look when they are fully extended, if they will all stay fully extended together. So this is a pretty good look. The The real problem is that those back two sails are too close together. So maybe I will do that. Maybe I will demolish the main sail in the middle add in two ceilings and move it forward one notch or so uh, without compromising the ramp. But this is a pretty good look for a boat. We can add a small sail. I'm going to do a, a, either a small weight or a small handling sail. Uh, the handling sail isn't going to make too much of a difference in how the ship operates, so maybe a small weight sail will be the answer. Um, but I think moving this forward one is going to be the ticket. And like I said, I have the benefit of being able to demolish things and uh, – and still recover the, re you know, rec make up the resources very quickly. So I'm going to try putting a couple ceilings in here. I'll bring you back in a second when I'm ready to do the fin final touches here. Okay, guys, it is time for our finishing touches. We are going to sacrifice the expense of this, and we're going to demolish this. All right. I know if you're playing unofficial, these are things you can't do, so let me ma make the mistakes for you. If we go here... We'll put a ceiling here and a ceiling here, and they are, ooh, sunken down ever so slightly. I wonder why. Um, but that's still lots and lots of room. In fact, we could probably even do two more. It's a, such a tough call. Uh, let's look at how this positioning looks. If I go ahead and put the large sail on my hotbar, we'll go to the K camera, and we'll go... So that is good. If I could go here, it would be even better. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, so let's continue this experimentation. Let's add in ceilings here and here, and let's try the big sail. This is probably the last, last adjustment we'll make. That is pretty well centered between the other two. Fantastic. Okay, so that is our look now. Let's zoom out and show you. I think that is pretty well balanced. So we have room for one additional sail. Now, what I think I would like to attempt to accomplish here is uh, something that looks better than it, it it's not going to be super effective either way so i've got a small handling a small speed and a small weight sail so if we zoom out we can get an idea of what these would look like placed uh, amidships in between the other ones so we could do a small sail there we could do a small sail at the back 
Okay, so that is as far back as we can go. That makes sense, and we can't place behind that sale. So what we could do is we could go in between with a small weight sail. I think the answer is going to be going to the very front of the ship, as we can't go here, here, or here. We could go here, here, okay, and so maybe something there. So let's try this. All right, and I think, I think that is going to do it for us. If we extend this... You can get an idea of how this will look. It's not going to be 100% histor historically accurate. It's not going to be, uh, you know, perfect. But with all the sails up, I think it's going to be a pretty good look. It's going to fill in some space on the front of the boat. And I think that'll work. So we've got the two large sails, both speed sails. We've got a large medium weight sail towards the back, which is going to have a good look itself. I showed this off to you earlier, but it's got very good design. It's got a triangular sail at the top, so it looks like almost like you're fore and after rigged, and it's got this uh, trapezoidal sail. Is that the right word? I think that's the right word. Uh, below it, and then this one you can see here is just like the bottom sail on the other side, but smaller. So what I have to do next, guys, is add in the captain's wheel, which uh, I don't know exactly where that's going to go with this mast being this far back. I'm going to have to finish building up this area, and I'm going to have to build out the hold. I think I will mainly cut away from you for most of that. I'll see about putting railings on either side of this and making this an easy place uh, to get creatures. I'll see about put sealing off this back section here uh, and leaving space in the front so we can eventually carry a whole lot of creatures on this boat, as well as goods and storage. It's a good design. I like it, and it's fairly close with the exception of that sail on the front. If we remove this, what we have is a historically accurate bark. A, f a foresail, square rigged. A mainsail, square rigged. And a triangular sail on the mizzen mast. I think it's a pretty good look. All right, guys, let me go do some more work on this boat. Let me get it ready. Let me get it ship shape and ready to, to set sail. And I will bring you back when we're ready to put this thing straight into the water. I can't wait. All right, guys, we are ready to add some finishing touches to this boat. I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, you're catching me on a rainy day, but I'm ready to go, and I don't want to wait for the weather to clear up. So let's take a look at what I have built. When I last left you, I had talked about adding a ramp down to the hold, and I've gone ahead and railed that off with a combination of railings, and they're snapped to the inside so that they come together cleanly with a half wall at the end, and then I went and added the sloped railings down here on the ramps. It was a little bit of work to get it to all go where I wanted it to, but I think that's going to look good, and as, as much as anything is going to work uh, for getting creatures down below, this should do it. So then we're going to have a wide open hold below right here, and it's very, very very spacious. Uh, I think eventually I may be able to build a row of ceilings up here and add cannons, but I'm not sure how that'll work. Um, and then I've added a couple of railings up here just for decoration. And back here, what I'm going to have is a little bit of a, a, a larder area, like a little cooking area, uh, as well as some beds. And then right here, I've added in a couple of enclosed areas for a loom and for a smithy, because those can't be locked and will have some valuable resources. So hopefully a smithy fits up here. Hopefully a loom fits down below. We're going to add in all of those bits as finishing touches now. And then over on this end, this will be the area for holding creatures, animals, and whatnot. Over here, I've added in a more secure area for some additional storage. So you've got ramps. Uh, a couple of uh, sort of complicated stairs leading up here, a little bit of storage stashed underneath, and then I've got these angle, angle, words, angled uh, doors that go here. These also function as a ramp up to this little uh, poop deck up here, and I've kept it small and fairly simple. Uh, we've got space on either side. I can eventually add storage or whatever we need over here. And then up here, we'll have a little area for the captain. I think in time, I may expand this. I may bring it forward a little bit to encompass this uh, rear mast. I'm not sure about that. And I may expand it to the sides or raise it up another level if we end up wanting like a captain's cabin. That is something we'll be able to build. There's plenty of space on this brigantine uh, for uh, those details. And of course, this is technically not a brigantine. It has three masts, so it's uh, three large masts. So it's a bark, and then I'm basically considering this not a mast. This is deck. Um, one thing we need to grab before we uh, go ahead and complete this thing is head over to the loom where I'm busy crafting a bunch of rope ladders. And I think we'll launch this thing and be ready to go here in just a moment. So let's head here. And I don't know how many I'm going to need total. Uh, I've gone ahead and made 24 of them. 
So hopefully that is enough. But the rope ladders, oh God, they're heavy. The rope ladders will get you up and down off the masts and uh, get you access to the crow's nests. So I'm going to go ahead, give me a sec to get back up on the boat. I will uh, go ahead and place these. Okay, guys, got all the ladders in place. It took around 60 or so, I would say, to get to the very top of each of the masts. Um, what I did was remove the one on the bottom here, here, and here. They kind of stay out of your view line, and they're really not necessary in order to get to the top. You can climb without jumping. Um, I left this one here, as this will go all the way. It, this one, I imagine, will be up most of the time. And if you didn't notice, ladder controls are here. Retract all ladders. Boom, all the way to the top. And then for the big masts, uh, you can retract every ladder all in one go. Uh, as we went up, uh, I did leave the ladders all the way down because um, I think it'll be easier. You don't want to be jumping or having to look too carefully as you're up on these masts. Uh, I think you'll get to here. You'll be able to climb up. And then same thing with this. I brought it basically all the way down to eye level. So uh, you already have to maneuver in order to get there. But this is your crow's nest. This is the tippy tip top of this thing. Pretty cool. I think it looks fantastic. And you can see the ship well balanced. It feels well balanced looking at it from above. And we're about ready to, uh, to add the other finishing touches. There we go, guys. So what else do I have in my inventory that we need to figure out a place for on this boat? Well, let's begin with the spot for the captain to sit. Now, this is a tough call where to put the wheel and where to put the other details. I think just from a decorative point of view, I'm going to go ahead and add a chair and a table up here where you could maybe sit with some maps. I guess maps on the deck of a ship is a bad idea. But if I rotate a chair like so and we put a table in just in front of it like so... All right, I don't know if those have a pickup. They do. Okay, and you can't slip around the side, but you can sit here. Okay, and can I go? Yes, okay. Let's take a look at how this looks. I think I'm happy with the positioning of that. I think you'll have a captain spot right here. He'll just chill. It's a pretty good look. Okay, so let's get out of this. All right, that spits me out on top of the table. I could still pick this up. I'm happy with the positioning. So now the question is, do we do a wheel right here? I don't think so. I think what I'm going to do instead is actually put a lieutenant's podium up here. Now, I don't know that I'll be commanding this ship with anyone anytime soon, but I think this lieutenant's podium will look good right here. You'll be able to control uh, a bunch of things from there. And then I think we'll put the uh, wheel just ahead of the mizzen mast. So let's go ahead and put this in place. And we'll assume that if you're commanding the ship, you're going to be standing right here. Let's line it up with this like so, and we'll back it up. I can see the line that it has to be on now. So let's go ahead and put the ship's wheel here. Okay, so that is where you'll stand to command the ship. I think it's a little bit unorthodox to have the wheel ahead of your mizzen mast. I think that's quite unusual, but because of the positioning I've got and going with the sloped entrance to the down below area, I don't want to try and cram it in there. I think that would be too much. So this is how you'd use your steering wheel. You control the rudders, and if you had NPCs, you can control the sails. And then the lieutenant's podium, I think... Is a, that's a pretty good position for it. So we're going to leave that there. What else is in my inventory that can go on the top decks? We've got these. These are water barrels. And I imagine, uh, I don't know that I'll be, these are 100% necessary to use all these, but I think there's something that will look good on the deck of the ship. They will gather water. So I'm thinking I'll cram a few uh, around the main mast where it connects here to the hold. So if we go ahead, they don't stack, but if we go ahead and put a few of them in here, maybe I can put a couple of storage boxes on either side. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh-huh. All right. Something like that. I like the, that starting to make this feel a little bit more active as a ship deck. What else do I have that is going to want to go on the deck of the ship? Okay, guys, so I made one of these. This is a dinghy crane, but I don't like the positioning of it. It intersects with the rigging if it goes here, and the only other position for it right here also intersects with the rigging. Um, I was really hoping I'd be able to put it on the back of the boat over here, but it seems like it only snaps to the sides, and the two positions I have, uh, if I was going to use this, I would have to reposition my masts, and I really like how they're laid out, so I don't want to bother with this thing. So I'll go ahead and donate this to another shipbuilder as we go. We've also got a tannery. That, I think, I can probably put on the deck of the ship somewhere and have it look like... Uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and we'll back it into this mast right here and we'll tuck it in like that. 
All right, how does that look? I think that looks all right. I think that's a pretty decent thing. Once again, making the deck of the ship look a little bit more active. I wonder if there's a better place for it. Let's pick it up for now. Let's go ahead and grab the smithy and one of our looms right now, and we will see about where to position those. I've gone ahead and built a couple of little areas specifically for these, so hopefully this works. Let's get inside and open the door outwards, like so, and then we will try the smithy. Yeah, this should work beautifully. So what we don't want is it intersecting with the ramp above, so we'll go ahead and do this. Okay, and then that should work beautifully as a smithy. Can I access it? Yeah, I have to get right inside to access it, but that will be secure so that we can do that. And then let's see if we can do the same thing with the loom. So I'll go ahead and get inside, go ahead and open the door from here, and then let's try and smack this thing right in here. So this is much taller. Uh, it might mess with my smithy above. Uh, we don't want it to stick through the ramp, so let's try doing this. You know what? We're going to have to leave it sideways like this. Oh, man, that is definitely... This thing is huge. Okay, so let's try getting outside. And nope, 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 nope. Okay, so let's try... This This might pin me in here. But let's try doing that. All right. And now I'm sort of trapped in here. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to have to mess with this. Okay. Okay, and I'm too slow. Now i got to demolish my loom. Okay, guys. Well, my building plans did not work exactly properly for the loom. It looks like it's going to need uh, more space than I gave it. So open that out. I had to demolish one of my doors, and I think if I do get this in here, it's going to mess with the smithy. So let's go ahead and try this. We'll rotate it around. Nope, that is going to be hideous. Okay. Let's try that real quick. Now, if I go here, I can access inventory for the loom. Now, let's see what how that affects this. It, I can still access the smithy. It looks a little bit strange, I have to admit. Uh, I, I, this might take some messing around in order to get this perfect. So I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to play around with some options and see if see how I can tweak that in order to make it work, but I would really like to have the loom hidden away. I think that would be wise. It's a it's a kind of a big thing, and it's a little bit ugly. It looks, it's a beautiful piece, but it doesn't look like it belongs on a ship. Uh, yet, on a, a well-designed ship, you ought to have one, I think. Make new ladders, things like that. Okay, so what else do we have in the inventory? Let's go ahead and uh, decorate up the larder area, if we can. Uh, I have a grill. I have an item that is called a food larder. And then I also have a cooking pot. So I'm going to put each of these down below in the kitchen area that we had set aside, which is going to be over here. And we'll try and find a little, uh, little way to make these look good. So what about the grill? Let's go ahead and try putting the grill right up against the mast here. Okay, how's that look? That looks pretty good. Uh, we just may want the larder there. No, larder's not ridiculous in size. So we'll go ahead and pop the larder right here. I'm not sure of the purpose of all these things yet, but I think that will work. And then we have the cook pot as well. All right, so I will go ahead and put that right here. Okay, maybe we'll add a campfire down here as well. And then I also have beds. I don't have an area set aside for crew. I'm kind of lamenting the fact that there are no hammocks as it stands uh, at this stage in the game. So I think what I'll probably do is stash uh, some crew beds back here. I could eventually hide them behind a wall and make it so that you have to go through a door to get here. But they can intersect and overlap, and these are mainly for respawning. So I'm just going to squeeze them in together. You know what? Two might be enough for now. Okay, guys, so here's the trick. I think my boat currently can only handle, and actually we can check this, uh, can only handle two beds. So if I go options, ship, uh, access ship properties, accommodations, zero. So I believe that is it. I believe that's all it can do. So let's go ahead and put them in on a bit of an angle like I had them initially. We'll put one here. We'll cross one over with it so that they are 
positioned like so. And then if you look, there are too many structures on this platform. That doesn't prevent me from doing this, so it's a bed limit. So that is a decent way to place two beds. I think that'll work. Eventually, I may do another cook pot over here just for decoration's sake, or maybe a little dining area. I could stash a little table and chairs, but we've got a grill, we've got a larder, we've got a cook pot, and I've got a couple of beds hidden away. What else do we have? What else do we have that we would like to include in this place? All right, guys, I think I've got the positioning for the loom. It is not 100% ideal. Oh, no, definitely not ideal. Okay, let's keep working on this. That is my last best hope. Does not clip through here. How bad is it up top? Smithy can still be accessed. It is not sticking through this door. Okay, I think that's the answer then. All right, guys, so night is upon us. Takes a long time to build a ship, uh, but I think if I do this, that properly hides the loom. It is not ideal. It obviously does stick through a little bit here, but not enough to mess with my smithy, not enough to ruin the look of anything. It doesn't stick through the door. It doesn't stick through the ramp, so that works. That is a hidden loom, a hidden smithy. We also have a kitchen area. We have a sleeping area. I really don't have much left that needs to be included in the ship, guys. A couple of the things that are left are the ship materials box. Now, this is something that is kind of essential. Any structures broken on the ship, uh, the goods go in here. Now, I think on PvP, you would want to hide this and secure it a little bit, but I think uh, on PvE, I probably don't have to worry too much about it. So what we'll do is we'll actually stash one on either side like this, and oh, it only allows one per ship. Okay, well, why don't we pick that up then? All right, guys, so we can only do one. I am going to place it right here. It will intersect ever so slightly with that mast, but it will be hidden. This can hold an insane amount of resources. Things stack uh, higher, anything that can be used for a ship. When you break things on a ship, they go in there and you put your gold and other things in there for your NPC crew. That is a decent setup, which means I do have room, after all, for the larder on the deck of the ship. Uh, so let, uh, The larder, pardon me, the tannery on the deck of the ship. So let's go ahead and we will place this as a sort of final touch. I think that is everything. Um, I'm going to wait till morning, guys. When I do, I will launch this ship. I will have to slap a name on it, but I'm going to ask you for advice on that front. I'll put a temporary name on it for now. And um, yeah, I'll come back to you in the morning. All right, guys, we are done. As far as I can tell with this ship, in the future, I may add a paint job. It would be kind of cool, but I really like the idea of a traditional looking sailing ship, white sails. Uh, I, you know, I could go crazy and paint them orange or something, but I, I think for my first brig... Uh, hull, my first bark, uh, I'm going to leave it with this design. And I think what we need to do, I have emptied the dry docks and I've gotten rid of the smithy and the loom at the end of it. I imagine I'm going to wreck these dry docks here in a moment, but what we need to do is launch this ship. So if I go here, release ship, ready? All right, so let's zoom out a little bit here, guys. I think it would be possible to get the ship out of here. You can see it kind of landed... <laughs> A little bit sideways, but I think what I'll do next is uh, exactly what I said, and I think we'll hop in the water here. All right, guys, ship is in the water. I think I am going to go to the trouble of demolishing this. Now, this is probably going to weigh me down intensely. Okay, you are encumbered. Perfect. Well, let me see if I can climb up on board. Oh, God, right. This is a lot of stuff. Okay, and we are over the deck. Perfect. All right. That was a terrible position for this anyway. We're going to reposition our whole, uh, going to reposition our whole shipbuilding area, I believe. Uh, I think that's probably makes the most sense. We have a really uniquely shaped harbor here, and I think as we build up, we are going to uh, make the most of that. So let's go ahead and transfer all that in there. You can see how this works. Stacks go up to 50,000, so uh, there's 7,000 weight inside that, 11,000 weight on the ship overall, so my ship weighs about 4,000, and we are ready to set sail. Now, uh, in order to get it out of the harbor, I think I should keep it fairly simple and maybe just use one sail. I don't know how fast this will go, but let's go ahead. It shouldn't go too fast on a big ship like this. Let's get on the wheel. And are, are we anchored? We are not anchored, right? Okay. And I will bring her around, guys. Now, I am just going to bring it out, but you can see the shape of the harbor here. Um, it, it, we have a nice little enclosed harbor here. It's great for ships, but it's not big enough for a large dry dock. I think I tried to make that work, and it definitely didn't, as I wrecked one of Araleigh's sloops earlier.
like that. All right, guys, so we're going to follow the lead of the other shipbuilders in the community, and we are going to start with a smithy on this side and stash that right there, and then I'll go put a loom on the other side. And it looks like uh, if you do have ships in the way, it doesn't stop you from placing this ship, uh, shipyard. So hopefully this is not a problem. Oh, Lord. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, beware. Whoops, sorry, O'Reilly. <laughs> um, oh, that's not good. This ship is sinking. Oh, my lord. Okay. I would love to get this thing on the open ocean, but we have a little bit of an issue right now, guys, on the server where um, uh, transferring zones isn't working super smoothly. Now, I know Tag lost a galleon, which was dozen. He said 10 hours of work, but this, this here took me easy 10 hours, so he must be a workhorse to get the galleon done, which is about five times as many resources in that amount of time. Um it's a, it's a tough <laughs> it's a tough one. So uh, what what we have now on this server is sixteen uh, sixteen servers working in conjunction with one another, and there you go. That's another sail raised. All right, and that should pick up our speed a little bit. Um, but yeah, we have sixteen servers working in conjunction. If we go ahead and look at my map here, uh, and you zoom right out on it, you can see we are in D four. So it works just like the big map. We have A to d one to four and uh each of these has more islands than you would normally expect so there is every island type there's every biome it is a pretty wild map but i don't want to leave d4 uh, because leaving d4 would not be ideal but maybe we can uh, i can get us out of d4 and sail us over to another island so let's do that uh, once i'm on the open water i will bring you guys back Okay, there we go. Oh, those speed sails make all the difference in the world, don't they? That is fantastic. Now, the visibility is quite poor, but if you look over here, guys, you can see how deep the harbor goes. I think the best place for ship construction is on that bank off to our right, uh, where you could have another enclosed harbor there, one here, and the ship construction in between the two. I think that would work well. The harbor is protected by a little sandbar island, and I think if I sail in this direction, we come up on a full island, but I'm sailing pretty much into the wind, uh, and obviously I'm sailing a very big ship with almost no crew, so I don't know that I can get, get us too far. Uh, what if we did that? All right, that would help. That would help a lot. Oh, don't go down there. Haha. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm going to wreck this thing. I'm going to crash it. I'm probably going to crash it. <laughs> uh, there you go. Okay. So there you go, guys. You can see the ship in action. Okay. And you know what? Tornado whipping in. I'm going to put down my sails. I'm going to sail at a gentle speed to another island before this ship gets sunk. I will be back in your life to sign this video off. All right, we did it, guys. This is a new island. I know it looks like the same island, but it is a new island. And it may have some of the things that I couldn't find on our desert island, specifically chili peppers, as one of the first things I want to tame as part of my beast mastery is an ostrich, and that is their favorite food. So I may explore this for crystal, for sap, for chili peppers, some of the things we couldn't find back there on our home island. And eventually, guys, I'm going to set out and look for a tundra island to call home so that I can set up a breeding facility and get into some taming, breeding, beast mastery, but for today, the goal was build a ship, and to build a historically accurate ship, this is a bark. Two large square-rigged masts, and then a uh, four-and-a-half-rigged mast at the back. I've added in a very small mast at the front for decoration. It's supposed to look like a sprit sail. It's pretty close. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the results, and I've anchored at a new spot, so I'm ready to go do some exploring. I hope you enjoyed, guys. I hope you enjoyed going on the process of building a brigantine with me, and technically... This is a bark, like I said, not a brigantine. But uh, we used the brigantine hull. We created a historically accurate and I'd say very attractive looking ship uh, with a fairly practical interior. I'm a fan and I'm excited to spend some more time on this server and eventually get into some creative building, doing some tutorials of ship builds. Lots of fun stuff ahead in the world of Atlas, guys. But I just want to thank you for hanging out with me in this one. If you want to join us on this server, click on the Patreon logo the day this video goes out. I'll make sure my Patreon page is updated with 
information and click on the other videos popping up on your screen to check out more of my Atlas stuff or the other series I have going on right now, which is Dawn of Man, a live uh, series we're doing in the mornings, uh, prehistoric colony building, lots of fun stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Click on those to keep watching and uh, I will see you guys in the next video.